Hi, I'm John DeSteiger. I'm the president of Oklahoma Christian University. We're blessed because today we have Dr. John Westerhoff on campus. The Intergenerational Faith Center, which has been operating for several years, has its third annual lecture tonight. And Dr. John Westerhoff, an expert in the whole idea of how do our children develop faith for the next generation, is here with us. Dr. Westerhoff, thank you so much for being on campus. My pleasure. We're honored that you're here. I want to ask you about about your raising, Dr. Westerhoff. Were you raised in a in a devoutly Christian family? No, I was baptized very young. Uh, I suspect it was for magic reasons, but uh, my family did not go to church, and so I don't remember going to church until I was about in fifth grade. We had just moved, and there was a church down the road where I could walk to. And don't ask me what moved me to do that, but I went there. It's a Dutch Reformed church, and uh, <clears throat> uh, Dr. Ogle, who was the minister, that just took me in. Uh, he became a kind of surrogate father for me, and he had me teaching in seventh grade. He had me teaching third grade Sunday school, mm. and he would have me uh, read the lessons and things in church. Was, he, and uh, he kept saying, "You need to be a pastor someday." When I went to college, uh, by then I was. Uh, beginning to question everything. And I found out that a lot of people in the religious community didn't like to do that. Mm. Dr. Ogle did, it, but, but the other ones I was meeting did not. And they wanted to be certain and wanted to be in control of truth. And uh, so I actually started my own little church in my room, which we sat there and argued theology, uh, probably pretty primitively. Uh, but again, I, w I need to teach. I wanted to so I had this little group, and I ended up with my fraternity mug said, preach on it. I don't know how much we accomplished, except we honored each other's right to seek. <laughs> and that was important to us. And uh, in fact, when I went, I, religion has always fascinated me. I mean, I, again, that's the kind of gift uh, that with teaching. And so when I, when I uh, <coughs> finished college, I went to Harvard Divinity School, primarily to study theology, not to prepare for hmm. pastoral ministry. Uh, and to teach, and that's why I chose Harvard. Uh, they didn't particularly prepare people for the parish, but it was a great mm -hmm. center for religion studies. Right. And so, uh, <clears throat> and in order to put my way through, as uh, my, my poor parents, they had a lot of trouble with my, at least in the early days. By the end, my mother had been reconciled with it all and was quite enthusiastic and became part of the church. But uh, I remember her, when I said I was going off to seminary to become a pastor, she, she, she cried. She said, you'll never have all the things we taught you to love. Mm. Fascinating thought, because you see, they were uh, uh, part of the era of the 30s, where uh, the Great Depression, and uh, my father had gone from being an office boy to being treasurer of a corporation. Thought I should do something like that mm. rather than mm. <laughs> go be parish pastor. They hoped for you and desired for you success right. oh, uh, yes. in, in a profession That's right. uh, that exactly. would provide for you and That's your right. family. That's right. That's and so they were very disappointed yes. when you began exploring the spiritual side That's of right. life in, right. in a profession yeah. there. Yeah. But, but, but I love hearing that toward the end, yes. your mom oh, enthusiastically yes. 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 embraced yes. that. Yes. Good. So it's a good news story, too. But anyway, the, uh, when I, I, they weren't going to pay for me to go to divinity school. If I wanted to go to medical school, that would be different. So I decided to do it anyway. Uh, in those days, you did something called field work, which meant you did, ran a youth group in a, in, a, in a church someplace, and they paid you for that, and that's how you got your income to go to seminary. And uh, I mean, this was, in this case, it was a congregational church, what was now the United Church of Christ. And... Uh, the pastor there, there also saw me, that teacher, and uh, so I was doing basically all the teaching for adults and such in the parish, even during seminary days. That, that's fascinating. I, I want to ask you, Dr. Westerhoff, I've, I love one of your quotes, and the quote's pretty simple, and I'd love for you to, to elaborate on it. Christians are fashioned, not born. That's right. Uh, yes, it was. It's actually taken as paraphrase of Tertullian, the early church father, mm -hmm. who said Christians are made, not born. And what it was taken is, you see, within Judaism, you're a Jew by your mother. Within Islam, you're a Muslim by your father. You were born that way. 
You're born into it. You can deny it, you can reject it, you what you want, but that's what your identity mm -hmm. is. Where in Christianity, we, that was not true. You were, had to be made a Christian, had to be fashioned a Christian. Uh, didn't happen automatically, and it wasn't, had nothing to do with whether your parents were religious or not. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're a good example of that yeah, yeah, as right. well. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Dr. Westerhoff, um, I mean, that's the big issue today. Right. How do we, how do we fashion our children to have faith? Right. I think the only answer to that is probably don't try so hard to do it, but to, but to be it yourself. Mm. Uh, it's that uh, it's that being that, that becomes important. You can't determine how somebody else is going to turn out. Wish that you could. We, in fact, we li we'd like to believe we could make Christians. Meaning the phrase, well, it is a literal translation of Tertullian. Uh, you can't fashion make them one. You have to. They will become that if they desire. Because of the freedom of the will, people can accept or reject all kinds of things mm -hmm. along the way. What you can do is provide them an example of an alternative. So that I always tell parents, don't worry about uh, how your children turn out. Worry how you turn out. If you care about your children, you'll worry about yourself. Mm. So if adults in the church would worry more about their faith and their life as faithfulness, that would be the best thing they could do. The child will take care of themselves along the way. Wow. And I think I experienced that for myself as well. So, it's, uh, so in that sense, it's, it's a kind of freeing your children will turn out the way they turn out, and you can't be blamed for them, nor can you take credit for them. I, I understand that. That's right. <laughs> I do understand that. And my parents are thankful for the same things, I believe. So, Dr. Westerhoff, a lot of, a lot of churches um, are, uh, are involved in mission and service mm -hmm. work. Um, and a lot of adults and parents are engaged in that along with their children. And that sounds to me yeah. like that's something that, that you would, um, would suggest would that's be right. beneficial and appropriate. It's, we have to learn to do things with each other and not two, for, two others or for others. We usually want to do something to the children or for them rather than do it with them. Mm -hmm. And that's the intergenerational piece. And that if we're doing it together, uh, age won't matter. And they will absorb it. When you isolate people out there, all alike, all women, all eight, certain ages and such, you separate them, and they don't mature very fast. Because we mature by being people who are more mature than we are. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and so if each of us worry about our piece of that, uh, we can do it. And I think the mission part is probably the beginning. Christianity, for me, is a way of life. It's based upon a way of seeing the world, faith. But it is the way of life. And if you have to almost live it out first, because that's the way that shapes your mind to envision it that way, to see it that way. Well, and, and Dr. Westerhoff, I think one of the things that I've read that you have said also is that when we do keep all of our kids together with their age or peer group, often we produce very sophisticated yet immature that's right. people. That's right. That's right. Hmm. Or, or religion becomes something you believe rather than something you do. Because for me, faith is even a verb. <laughs> mm. it's, it's an action. Wow, this, um, boy, thank, thank you for this, Dr. Westerhoff. If you had one final parting shot, one final message to provide the students at Oklahoma Christian University or those who are watching this video, what would you say? Yeah. One, accept the fact you're in a Christian university and that therefore that means that you're on a pilgrimage. And use your time here, not just for all the important academic things that go on, but to enhance your spiritual life and your moral life. You have an opportunity to that, hopefully, within a school that has certain principles that it stands for that ought to be party to that. I might give just one little example of Please. that. I was lecturing at a Mennonite college a number of years ago, and after my lecture, a student came up and announced that there was an earthquake in Mexico. Within one hour, the whole student body had organized themselves. They had collected a tremendous amount of money. They had a truck loaded with what their people down in Mexico said they would need. They had a bus, buses packed, and people were heading off, students and faculty. Those might come two days later because they had an exam first. Mm. But the place just went, and I talked to this first-year student, and I said, tell me, why did you do that? He looked at me kind of oddly and said, we're Mennonite Christians. 
Christian college, university, has a chance to shape people into this body of Christ that they are part of by their baptism. Mm -hmm. And uh, that needs to be part of the mission of a Christian university, along with providing the finest professional education and academic work. Mm. Wow, very good. Dr. John Westerhoff, will our children have faith? How do we do that? We live our faith out with them, and we act. Dr. Westerhoff, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.